A few months ago, I released a video where I replaced the stock battery of my daughter's Power Wheel Jeep with a pair of Milwaukee 18-volt lithium-ion batteries. It was a fun build, and for the most part, a lot of people seemed to like it. Not all, of course, but a lot. However, there was one recurring question in the comments. How long did the Milwaukee batteries last in this setup? And that's a great question, and we'll run some tests and find out today. But an even more important question was, how do you prevent battery over discharge? You see, lithium ion batteries are a sensitive beast and they can be permanently damaged when discharged below a certain level. And I'm gonna fall on my sword here. I was wrong about how Milwaukee batteries handled this. You see, it was my assumption that the onboard circuitry inside the battery prevented over discharge when in fact, the circuitry in the battery is essentially useless without being used in conjunction with a Milwaukee tool. If the tool isn't connected, the battery can be allowed to simply run itself dry. So we'll fix this with a simple $12 battery discharge monitor circuit. It has an inline relay that will automatically open and kill the power to the Jeep when the voltage drops below a specific value. So what is that low voltage cutoff value? Let's find out. Most of what I was able to find online mentioned 16 volts as a safe zone cutout. But when I ran down a nearly dead battery in the drill until the protection circuit cut the power, it came in at just around 13 and a half volts. While we have a battery that we know has been run down to its maximum cutoff level, let's find out how long it actually takes to bring it up to a full charge. Not bad, just over 90 minutes. Adding the low voltage cutout to the schematic I used in the original video is fairly simple, but we will need to make a few small changes. And this is because the cutout module needs to be in the circuit before the DC motor controller. And it uses smaller screw type terminals, which are too small for both of our battery leads to terminate together in the one spot. So, I'll add a small barrier terminal block and join both of the batteries together there in parallel. From the terminal block, we'll go through the low voltage module, into the DC speed controller, and then finally out to the motor. I'm going to reuse the existing battery connectors and the lead to the motor, but I do have to make a few new whips to go into and out of the cutoff module. In the wiring diagram above, you can see how both batteries are joined together at the terminal block, and then into and out of the cutoff module, and then finally into the speed controller. You'll notice that after the battery terminal, I use a white wire for my positive lead, which is an unconventional color for a hot lead. And this is because the vehicle itself uses white as a positive lead, and I wanted to keep some consistency in the diagram. I also use a blue and a blue-white stripe to clearly identify the output leads of the cutoff module when it's mounted in the vehicle. I'll put a link in the description to the wiring diagram as well as the terminal block and the low voltage cutoff module I used. I drilled a few holes into the top of the battery compartment and added a small piece of foam insulation below the module to help protect the solder points on the board. In this shot you can also see where I mounted the terminal block to the inside of the battery reservoir just behind the speed controller. Once the cutoff module is mounted to the vehicle, the input from the battery and output to the speed controller are terminated. If you haven't noticed by now, I'm a firm believer in using the proper wire terminals whenever possible. A crimped wire ferrule on the end of a lead not only makes field wiring that much cleaner, it also prevents stray strands of wire from not being fully inserted into the terminal jaws. You can see the cutoff module power up as soon as the first battery pack is installed. I set the speed controller to the don't tell mom setting and we're off. I didn't feel comfortable with the 13 and volts from the earlier test. Everything I read said 16 volts was the cutoff limit for Milwaukee so I thought I'd play it safe and set the cutoff voltage to 16 and volts with a 1 volt reset threshold. Now I know what you're thinking and I can already see the comments starting to flood in. This test is useless. There's no rider in the vehicle, so there's no load or excess amp draw on the motor. Of course, the batteries are going to last longer. And you're absolutely right. But this is just a bench test using the same parameters as the speed tests I used from the original build video. 
There was no load on the motor then either, and I wanted to accurately gauge how long the setup lasted using the same criteria. For what it's worth, the bench test comes in at just over three hours of runtime, which is pretty impressive. To be honest, I had planned to do a nice rundown test with the kid in the vehicle outside. You know, one of those nice time-killing montages in the park or something. But it's January and about 8 degrees in Chicago right now, and for some reason my wife was against it. So that's not going to happen. But we do have access to a warehouse where it is nice and warm and we can do our testing indoors. My driver for today is Alex. Hi, I will be driving the Jeep for you today. And here's the ground rules. We have two fresh battery packs installed. Speed controller is set at 75% or the do not tell mom setting. And we'll start the timer as soon as we go. If we stop for longer than 10 seconds, we'll stop the timer and restart. At the end, we'll take a look at the timer and see what she says. You ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Just like in the bench test, the voltage module is set to cut out at 16 and a half volts with a reset threshold of one volt. Once the cutout kicks in and stops the output to the motor, the voltage will increase slightly because there's no longer a load on the batteries. The threshold setting helps account for this and it acts as a buffer so that the module doesn't immediately restart after the voltage rises. The output relay will not re-energize until the incoming voltage is at least at the cutout set point plus the threshold amount, which in this case is 17 and a half volts. Okay, so the battery monitor kicked in at 16 and a half volts. And you can see why that voltage threshold value is pretty important because the voltage has already come back up to 17.4 volts. Um, both batteries are completely discharged, but the most important question is, how long did we go for? We went for 1 hour, 41 minutes, 8 seconds, and 52 milliseconds. Yeah, just over an hour and 40 minutes uh, considering we made a couple stops. That's pretty good. What do you think? It's pretty good. All right, anything else? Can we go home now? Yeah, let's go home. So what's the end result? Well, with the Milwaukee setup, we get at least a healthy hour and a half in the field. The batteries get to a full charge in just about 90 minutes, and we're also running at a 50% increase in speed over the stock battery, which never lasted close to an hour on a good day. Now, do you absolutely need the battery monitor? Well, that's up to you. When you know the runtime, you can always pull the batteries before they discharge. But for 12 bucks, it's a cheap safety measure and another valid excuse to not have to watch your kids for 90 minutes. I heard that. All right, sorry. Get in here before mom finds out we're out here. See you next time. Thanks for watching. I hope you like and comment and subscribe. See you next time. So, I'm just gonna go now.